I'm Judith from Deer and Sparrow. Welcome to my tutorial on weaves and lacing. Throughout this tutorial, I'm using products that were gifted to me by Resonate. There are two parts to this tutorial. The first covers the basics of creating weaves in resin, and the second focuses on how I made this painting. These are the items that I've used in this tutorial. So from Resonate, there is some one-to-one -one epoxy resin. And we've got gorgeous pigments, so the Midnight Blue, one of my favourites is the Deep Sea Blue. These are both opaque. And then the Transparent Light Blue. We've got two Mikas, so almost Ice and Sapphire. And then the opaque White. And this is a Legion Brown Circle Board. You also need some mixing cups, gloves, mixing sticks. I wear a respirator. The spirit level is a handy thing to have too and some alcohol on hand is also very handy. This particular one's 99.5%, but anything above 70 is fine. I use it mainly for cleaning um, my heat guns. And so to heat the resin, to move it around, I use three things. So I've got the heat gun here, and then I have a heat tool, and a torch. So the torch is great for getting out air bubbles, it doesn't really move the resin that much. This one moves the resin a lot, and this one moves the resin less because it's less powerful, so I kind of you go between the three of them. So yeah, let's get started. Part 1 covers the basics of creating weaves or lacing in resin, and I'm using just clear resin and the white opaque pigment. So start by mixing your resin. Resonate have a really good tutorial video on how to actually mix their resin properly, so have a look at that. Um, you mix it slowly. This video speed it up, um, so don't do it as fast as that. Add some resin, a small amount, to another cup, and then you want to add in the white pigment. Um, I always start by adding less, and then you can add a little bit more. Um, you need to have no more than 10% pigment to the volume of your resin. And you need to mix it really well. So it should be runny, um, like a good quality washing up liquid. So start by adding some clear resin to your level surface and just spread it all over. Make sure that there's no um, missed areas and it's right to the edge. As you can see there's some air bubbles so you want to get rid of those and you do that by using you can use a heat gun as I'm using here or you can also use a torch. Torches are slightly better and um, they don't blow the dust around but for the first layer uh, a heat gun is generally fine. Now it's time to start the weave so I always add a line of clear resin where I want the weaves to go and then over the top of that I add a line of the white pigment mixed with resin. And give the whole thing a quick flash of heat just to get rid of any extra bubbles and now it's time to make the weaves. So I normally start with uh, the heat gun at a 45 degree angle just pushing the white into the clear resin and then to help spread out a little bit more I hold the heat gun down at a 90 degree angle and spread out the white. Then I lift the piece and gently move the resin back and forth. It helps spread the white out slightly more. And then leave it to cure for 24 hours. So that's the basics. So my best advice would be to practice um, Things like humidity, the temperature of the room, what the weather's doing, they all affect how resin cures and one of the best things you can do is just record yourself working and then you can see where it all goes wrong or all goes right and just have fun. Um, it's, a, it's a very fun medium to work with. 
You can also experiment with the different heat chills, see what different effects you can create with each of them. You can experiment with adding a little bit more white pigment or a little bit less white pigment. Um, you can also experiment with the density of your resin, so whether you use the resin freshly mixed or maybe like 15 minutes later, all of these things will change the outcome. And then once you're happy, you can go on and start adding some colours and that's the next part of the tutorial. So now it's time to use some colours. So again, carefully mix your resin, divide it into smaller plastic pots. Um, for this, I'm using two Mikas, the three blue pigments and then the white pigment. Um, once again, add no more than 10% of the pigment to the volume of your resin. And I would always start by adding less and then you can add a little bit more later if you feel it needs to be stronger and mix them well. So I've added some of the mixed pigments to the wooden circle and I'm using a silicone spatula to spread them out and I've got Mika's in here and I've got the opaque pigments as well so I kind of want to create a little bit of texture the Mika's are really good at creating kind of movement so I kind of have swirled them around a little bit just to add an extra dimension um, once you're happy with that add a line of clear resin where you want the waves to go I just find that this adds another layer of depth um, to a piece and the waves turn out better when I do it this way. I know not every artist does it this way. And now I add the white over the line of clear resin. I always start off the edge of the surface and go kind of over the edge of the other and it stops kind of a blob of resin at the edge of your canvas or wood panel. And now remove any air bubbles with the heat gun or if you have a torch handy it is slightly better because it doesn't blow any as much dust into your piece. And then you can start making waves so start at a 45 degree angle, push the white into the clear resin and just spread it out and experiment with the different shapes that you want. This is the base layer so you can kind of create your composition in this layer. You don't need to worry too much about depth because you normally need to add at least two layers to your resin piece. For this piece I wanted to do some like a cold ocean. I'm from Northern Ireland and one of my favourite things was to stand at the coast in winter and just watch the waves come crashing on the rocks. And so I have this image in my head of just the kind of cold blue water and waves just come in constantly crashing so I wanted a lot of froth and a lot of foam in this. Um, for that you need to use more heat um, and it makes smaller cells whenever you use more heat. So if you want larger cells go for lower heat and slow. The resin at one to one resin only takes about four to five hours to cure, which is really good. Um, so I'm going to start with the second layer now. So it's level and I'm starting by adding a very lightly tinted transparent blue resin and then some clear resin over the top and then I basically spread it all out. And this layer I'm focusing more on the waves rather than the colour. So once again add a line of clear resin where you want the waves to go. And again, this just helps create a little bit extra depth. And then you add the white over that clear line. And now it's time to make the waves. So first of all, start with removing any air bubbles with a quick flash of heat over it. I want to create more frothy 
spray for these weaves. So I'm starting with a 90 degree angle. This is one of my favorite things about working with resin. You can create so many different effects with just a few items. So you can use the heat gun at different angles, different distances from the surface. You can use different actual heat tools. So you can use the torch, you can use the heat tool or the heat gun as I'm using here. And just moving the resin around and creating the effect you want. It's brilliant. that's layer two finished I'm just gonna move the white gently back and forward just to spread out the white a little bit more and then I'm gonna leave it to cure and it may need a third layer I'm not sure we'll see tomorrow Decided it does need a third layer so for this layer I'm adding a little bit more color I'm using the sapphire mika the almost ice and a little bit more blue transparent and obviously white so start as always with covering your surface in resin I'm starting with a little bit of clear resin over the areas I want to try and keep and not lose those details and then the rest I cover in different colors Here it is. Here's the final piece. A stormy, rough sea with waves crashing on the rocks. I wanted to show you the painting in strong sunlight so you can get a real idea of the depth that the layers create with the white and also the beautiful shimmer of the Mika. It just adds another dimension to the painting. And that's it for this tutorial. A big thank you to Resonate for giving me some products and letting me play with them and experiment and patiently waiting on this tutorial video. I hope that you have enjoyed it and I hope that you've picked up some new hints and tips from it and hopefully I'll make another one in the future. Bye!